One more real simple thing that we're going to do. Um, we are going to figure out what 0 to 10 wire speed means. When you look up welder settings online, you, there's charts for, you know, I'm welding this, I'm welding that, it's this thick. They will tell you you need to have, you know, this voltage or this amperage, which unfortunately on this machine, we have essentially no control over. You've got min and max to switch it between 60 and 80 amps. Um, and anything you can weld on 60, you could probably weld on 80, so I just leave it on max and duct tape it for all I care. Um, but they will also give you a wire speed. And generally, um, if it's a manufacturer specific chart, it'll just give you a number, set our machine on this number. But charts from standards bodies and, and things like that will actually tell you inches per minute of wire feed speed for a given wire diameter. So you can look on there and see, all right, I'm welding this thickness of material, I need, and I'm using 030 flux core wire, so I need X number of inches per minute. Well, the problem is there's no translation in the manual from zero to 10 wire feed speed to inches per minute. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure it. I'm gonna set it on zero, I'm gonna pull the trigger, and I should have a timer for this, I, I don't. I'm just gonna count six seconds, and I'm gonna measure how much wire comes out. I'm gonna multiply that by 10, and that's the number of inches per minute of wire that we're getting out of this rig with it set on zero. So to get an accurate measurement, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it right here at the zero point on this 48 inch T-square. So now I can really stretch it out and I can see that I got 13 and 3 quarters, 13.75 inches of wire in my six seconds. I multiply that by 10 and that's 137 and a half inches per minute of wire at the zero set. I don't know what I'm going to do with 137 and a half, so I'm probably just going to label the zero as 135 and call it a day. All right, with our 135 all sharpened in, let's go the other direction. Let's count off six seconds of wire with it set on a full 10. We obviously got a lot more wire <laughs> with the thing set on 10. But I'm going to use the same procedure to measure it. So let's clamp this bad boy right here. Stretch the other end out. What we got was 38 and a quarter. You multiply that by 10, you get 382 and a half. Um, so again, I'm just going to call that 380. Write it in. And the one thing we should probably do is we should probably check it at the five position because I would love to be able to assume that this thing was linear the whole way around and that I could just divide it up one to 10 and, and that would be a day. Um, but this is a Harbor Freight well. So we're gonna set it on number five. And we're gonna check it right in the middle once we have that labeled, I figure you can eyeball whatever you want from there. Okay, I got 18 inches of wire out of number five, meaning that it's 180 inches per second. So you can already see that this is in fact nonlinear. You go from 135 to 180 inches per second going from zero to five, so you added 50% plus or minus. Um, to the, to the wire speed, no, not even 50. When you go from five to 10, you go from 180 to 380. You more than double the wire speed. So it's important to check this. If you wanna get really precise with it, you know, you can check it at each and every number. Um, I may, you know, as I set it to various different settings for welding as I use it, I may bother to, to do the test, I may not. Um, if you want it to be more accurate, what you need to do is run more wire out. Instead of six seconds, run it out for 10 or, 
or run it out for a full minute. Um, you will get better accuracy. You will also waste a whole lot more wire. So the choice is yours. Might be a good thing to do before you take the cheap harbor freight wire out. 